Well, welcome to another episode of Just One More Fix. This is James. With me in this episode is Carrie and Lacey. Hey. You can find us online at justonemorefix.com or on Twitter at Just One More Fix. If you like us, head over to iTunes or to Google Play and give us a rating and a comment. In this episode, number 10, we're going to discuss 3D printing and gaming. And now, it's time to get our gaming fix. One shot. So welcome to Just One More Fix. A couple of announcements here. Uh, just to reiterate, our, our release schedule is moving along pretty well. I barely managed to get my blog post done this morning and proofread and put up. So uh, again, blog post about gaming-related stuff on Mondays. Uh, we'll have a regular podcast release on Wednesdays, and our review episodes will drop on Fridays. The last week of the month, we may not have a review episode because depending on how much bandwidth or space we have on our uh, our schedule for for how much content we can release any month. So if you do see one that drops off at the end of the month, it's not because we're stopping doing it, just because we didn't have enough space on the content. Just something to let you guys know about our reviews. All of the reviews that we do are games that we own. We've played several times. So not to say, not to say that we won't... How do I say this? We're going to review games that we play, basically, and we play games that we like. I don't know if that makes sense. Makes sense to me, but I'd try a game I didn't like. Oh no, I I don't disagree. I mean, like you know, I I'm the idea is that we're gonna try and turn people on to games. You know what I mean to find to help them find games that they want to play. So just so you know, we're not we're not getting any kind of kickbacks. It's all ones that we just enjoy playing that we've tried. We just want you to be as like. turned on as we are. There you go. Or you can give us kickbacks too. Yeah, well, kickbacks are cool. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, so uh, like you heard in the intro, uh, today we're gonna talk about 3D printing and and specifically 3D printing related to gaming. Uh, so I've been 3D printing for about eight months now. That feels about right. Eight months to a year, we'll just say. Um, and I've had tremendous success with it. I love it. It's awesome. So just for you guys that don't know that are out there, 3D printing is basically you can do it at home, and it's a small machine, and it extrudes plastic. It might as well be magic. It's it's really, really cool. Um, it looks like magic. Very hypnotizing. Yeah. Something. So there's a lot of you, uh, videos on YouTube you can Google. It's all time stop. You know, so it's it's the the camera speed is sped up, so it is kind of a slow process, but it works. It will be significantly faster on the YouTube video, yeah, yeah. than in real life. So I just <laughs> want to kind of put one thing out there. Uh, what we're going to talk about is just three D printing in general as it relates to gaming. What I'm not, what we're not going to advocate for is there are a lot of stuff out there to uh, print miniatures from like Games Workshop and a lot of other companies because those companies, they, in order to stay open and produce great games, they've got to make money. So that's not what we're advocating for. What we are going to talk about though is a lot of the free stuff that's out there that you can get to print and a lot of the other uh, other things that have been put out specifically for three D printing that we've I've funded through Kickstarters and that kind of stuff. So onward, yeah. Uh, to start off, we have I have a uh, Mono Price Maker Select 3P is the printer that I have and use, and it works great for me. Uh, it was about 350 shipped to the house here, and it had everything you need except for filament, essentially. And it does single filament, so it is one line of plastic in one color. Yeah, so you can change colors on it, but it does only at at one time it only prints in one color. So you can print in gray or black or white or blue or yellow. There's all kinds of different colors. There's also some specialty colors that are pretty cool. There's like a wood grain one and some other options. Um, I haven't tried the wood grain just because I haven't ordered it or whatever, but it, it it works really well and the filament is pretty cheap too. So there's lots of printers out there. If you're looking into looking to get into it, the one of the biggest features you want to look at is how big the print bed is, which would be the space that you can print on, what you want to print. So if you want to print something that's like six inches by six inches, you've got to get something that will at least accommodate that on the print bed. Because the one that I have prints, the printable area is about eight inches by eight inches by eight inches, if you think of a cube that way. Um, and it has worked really well for me. It's printed everything I've I've got and wanted. We've printed some Halloween masks and some other stuff we'll talk about here in a bit. But it's it's a great asset. I think it's really, really cool. And I think it's one of the future things that most people will have in gaming once it gets a little more mainstream. I think the most basic question that I've got as far as that goes is um, I've been asked a couple of times, well, where did you get that? And I'm just going to clue everybody in out there. There's this amazing thing called Amazon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, if you don't know it, aren't familiar with it, you should become acquainted. That is where ours came from because yeah. we live in the middle of nowhere. It's definitely not the technology center of the world. <laughs> Still managed to get a 3D printer. Right. So, yeah, they're and they're available all over the place. There's a lot of different companies that make them and you can go crazy and spend thousands of dollars on them if you want to. 
but that wasn't something that I wanted to jump in. And I know I wouldn't be able to convince Lacey to say, Hey, I'm going to spend a couple grand on a machine that I don't even know if it's going to work or I'm going to like it or not. So you can, the entry level, uh, price point isn't that high. You know, like I said, three fifty, and that was shipped to the house. Uh, filament runs about, uh, I buy hatchbox. I buy hatchbox filament off of Amazon as well. And I've had great luck with it. No problems. It's very consistent in the thickness and that kind of stuff. So, so, a filament for anybody that's not really like familiar it's basically like a spool of plastic so if you're picturing a spool of thread it's like that but with plastic and the plastic feeds down and magic happens and the printer turns it into a neat new 3d object yeah, basically, that, that's what filament is it, it extrudes the plastic basically the there's a heating element that gets hot and it has a if you know how a cnc machine works it's all you know the the tolerances for the distance it moves is very small you can get quite a bit of detail out of it. It's really impressive. We'll, I'll post a lot of pictures of stuff that I have printed here myself. And it's Christmas time, so you can see them running at Sam's oh. and at Best Buy, and they have hands-on printed objects that you can touch and feel. They're really I didn't cool. even think about that. And coming up if for Christmas. you have a 3D printer, you can print all kinds of neat things yeah. for friends and family. Uh, so your stocking stuffers you were going to buy for your kids, guess what? 3D printer. Yeah. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff online that you can get to print little Pokemons and all kinds of cool stuff that are all free to download off of Thingiverse. So one thing about it, I guess there's a every like if you guys have listened to I think it's episode two, we kind of introduce ourselves. So I'm like everybody knows I'm a paramedic, but before that I went to school uh, back in the long time ago, 1997. I went to school for engineering for a couple of years, and I had this is when AutoCAD first came out, so I had a little bit of experience with AutoCAD, but like not a lot. We were still doing drafting on paper when I was going to school, but the big thing for me is I'm not. Ah, laugh at me. It's okay. I'm smirking. <laughs> yeah. Just smirking. <laughs> so the big thing for me is, though, is that I'm not scared to try and tackle a project, which has been my biggest asset for all the things that I think that I've I've taken on. And the software that's out there you use is all free. It's very simple. You, with a little bit of YouTube searching, and if you can watch a video on YouTube and, you know, have one two windows open and clicky-clack between the two, you know, you can, anybody can do this. It's not hard at all. It's not technical. If you have any kind of now, you can get more technical with it, though, when it comes to like oh, yeah. modifying mm -hmm. files and designing your own files for things to print. So mm -hmm. that's definitely there if you are yeah. tech savvy and want to delve right. that far down into it. The well it. is very deep. It's a very big rabbit hole to go down. But at the same time, if you just want to get into it and only print files that are pre-made, you can totally do that. And it's actually very, very cheap to do if you want to print um, terrain stuff, which is what a lot of, I use a lot of it for. It's way, way cheaper than buying it. So. I guess I would say I was probably a little skeptical at first, but it has definitely paid for itself. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So if you if you have spouses or significant others or parents or whatever that are leery about it, I don't know, you may have them listen to this because it's uh, I've had a great time with it and it's, it's more than paid for itself, especially if you're into buying a lot of war game terrain or like dungeon train for your miniatures and that kind of stuff. Or miniatures um, themselves. Yeah, your miniatures. So, yeah. So I guess, you know, the, the 3D as printing aspect of it is pretty... Basic and straightforward. I don't want to focus on a lot of that because it's there's already a lot of people that talk about that. But what we are going to talk about is a lot of the things that are already out there that are pre-made that are basically ready to go out of the box, you might say, for your 3D printer. So, so there's. can we just talk about like what our favorite thing is that's come off the 3D printer? Sure, go for it, yeah. Okay, so am I going first? Yeah, go for it. Okay, um, I think we printed a Dr. Doom mask. Mm -hmm. And that is solidly my favorite. Right it on. is amazing. The detail is good. And um, our son wore it as part of his Halloween costume. And everybody thought he was pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. We do we do quite a bit of cost, not quite a bit, but for Gen Con every year, we do at least two two different costumes that we do for cosplay. And the Doctor Doom was, was very cool for it. Carrie, would you have a... My favorite thing is the terrain. The yeah. terrain he printed is 3D and it's super cool. It takes you right to the dungeon. You can manipulate it. It's much better than using a dry erase marker on mm -hmm. a map, it in my opinion. It totally yeah. changes like the immersion of it. Like well, it is way different. The doors they open and close. Mm -hmm. There's there's doorways. They're stackable. You can connect the pieces. They're like four by four squares, mm -hmm. um, and you you know they have connectors you can get for them to hook them together. And like I said, stack them. And then there's there's even one with like a a portcullis, I guess. Yeah. Um, that that raises and lowers. There's one with a little trap door on it. So I mean, they have like movable parts. Even which mm -hmm. is, is pretty fantastic. Were the terrain pieces a free thing, or were they something you helped? So start? no, they were. Uh, the company is called Fat Dragon Games, and there will be a link in the show notes. Uh, and the ter the dungeon pieces, the dungeon tiles, are actually called uh, Dragon Lock because they're each of them are. If you hear any kind of rattling around, it's because we have them on the table here. They're two inch. Each of them is a generally a two inch by two inch square. 
and they all kind of interlock together. They have little clips that, that you print as well, and they and it kind of locks them together. So you so when you have them, you uh, don't have to have all these small pieces. You can transport them at, like the dungeons as rooms if you have to transport them somewhere. But they also come apart, and you can kind of configure them however you want. And there's corner pieces and like wall pe- straight walls. Doors, archways, portcullises, trap doors, all kinds. It's it's just a ridiculous amount. So I funded that on Kickstarter, and it was really, really successful, and I love them to death. They are great. The other thing that's interesting about them is that you download them through DriveThruRPG, but whenever they update one of the files, so let's say it doesn't print quite as well, or, or whatever the issue is, or some little wonky thing with it, anytime they update it, they update your file. So it's not like you have to get a new one. They just put out put the update straight out there, and you can download the update, and then it emails me. Something that they did they did do is they changed the way these uh, clips were locked together to a uh, an easier one. It's kind of like, for lack of a better word, kind of like spring loaded or whatever. That's all been updated for free, and you just download them, and you're good to go. So for people that aren't familiar, so one of these terrain pieces, four by four with a wall, how long does that take to print? So uh, the corner pieces take a little bit longer, but like if you imagine a two by two square. With, a, with one flat wall that goes along the edge of it on my printer, prints in about six hours. Now, I know that sounds like a long time, but what's nice about it is I'm going to get ready to go to work. I set it up. I start it to printing. I go to work. Whatever I come home, it's done. I'm going to go to bed for the night. I start it to printing. I go to bed. I wake up. It's done. So there's you don't have to babysit it. Once you've got it set up correctly, it just sort of you just got to turn it on and tell it to go, and off it goes. And these replaced ceramics for you? Yeah, so I was using uh, ceramic tiles, which are very nice. And they the ceramics are a little bit nicer. They have a little more detail, but they are much more time consuming to do because all the labor you have to do, you physically have to do it. You have to pour the mix of plaster and you know all that stuff. And at that point, too, you're printing small sections of wall or even individual bricks, each mm-hmm. of which you're then painting. You're gluing them together, right. setting them up how you want them. And this prints out. It's done except for the paint. All you have right. to do is paint it. So I, I will say the ceramics are very nice. And they, I mean, there are some people that really, really go way, way, way above and beyond to make them look great. But if you're looking for something that's, you know, more functional, I guess, as opposed to like a piece of art, you know, for your for your gaming. I mean, they are very nice. I mean, mine are dry brushed. It's they look great. I'll put up some pictures of them and they are awesome. But uh, and that, I, they're much more durable. The plastic is great. I mean, like I can squeeze this thing as hard as I can. And and I'm we, not going to break it. We all it. have kids. Generally, yeah. when we game, there's at least four kids, five kids, sometimes even six kids right. present. So um, it's important that things are durable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because nothing's worse than spending a lot of time to glue and puts them together and then it gets tipped over and then it's ruined so yeah i, I love the dragon lock tiles my my personal favorite i think i kind of have two one is i i had a a glasses mishap with our dogs i couldn't get into the eye doctor and within for like two weeks so i had to get to get an eye exam so my lenses were okay but my frames were all wrecked so i actually printed a set of frames for my glasses um i modified a, a file that i found online for free and i printed a set of glasses for me i still have them they're awesome they're very cool so that's been my favorite. They don't look that good. I'm just throwing it out there. I, I, I think they look cool. I, well, no, I like them because they're kind of... They kind of look like a classic nerdy glasses, yeah. except they're printed with gray filament. Yeah, they're gray. And they're kind of like rough looking. But the the frames, are the, they're your basic BCG right. glasses. Yeah, they're but, be, you birth, you know. that's birth control glasses for those of you that don't know. You wear them and then you don't need birth control. The glasses do it for you. But they're the they're the the a smaller horn rim style, you know, like Buddy Holly style kind of glasses. But I love them. I think they're awesome. I do brag about them, but... The BCG part is mentioned too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. They are. Well, I no, I kind of, but those are kind of in style now too. Geek, I, I geek love chic. them. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing that I like that I printed was I found there's a game available on Thingiverse that somebody made that they released for free to print. So I was trying to see how much detail I could get out of my printer. So I printed some miniatures, um, and I'll put post pictures of these. I got a couple of dwarves. One is uh, printed for like a 22 or 28 millimeter scale, and the other one I think is a 10. So I'll I'll post them next to each other, and we'll have some other minis. Uh, in the in the pictures for for scale ideas and stuff like that, so but those were my two favorites. Those are our favorites. Some of the other cool things that we've printed, though, um, the box for the virtual reality goggles. So you put your phone in oh, yeah. it and um, basically becomes a VR. Yeah, thing. I've got a VR setup that I've, I'm working on. Uh, I, I have a really cool. It's shaped like a D20, but it opens up. It's a it's my dice box. It's where I keep all my dice. That thing is it is when I had it finished. I was like, this thing is so awesome. Um, I also uh, have printed from Printable Scenery. I think it's printablescenery.com. I'll link them too. I funded their Kickstarter and they have a frigate. So like 7C was just coming out. Woo! And um, <laughs> yeah, we're big fans of 7C. And I thought it would be really cool to have, you know, something better than kind of an oval shape to represent. It's something drawn on a piece of paper to represent the frigate. 
I, I funded it solely for the frigate. There's some other stuff that came with it, some more terrain stuff, but uh, I printed it and it is awesome. I'll put it's not painted or anything yet, or actually even assembled yet, but it's it's mostly done. So I'll I'll show it in the in the show notes as well. We've also done a dice tower. Yep. And uh, another mask. We have a Guy Fox mask mm-hmm. that just got done printing as well. Yeah, I just finished printing it, painting it today. So the cosplay applications for this are phenomenal, mm-hmm. um, not just for the masks. Um, we cosplayed uh, X-Men this year, um, s- well, some of them, uh, and I guess some X-Force and some villains. Some other and, villains yeah. and Anyways, it, it was a mix of basically X-Men people. Uh, I did Mystique, uh, the old comic book version with the, the white dress and the skull belt, and so all the skulls on the belt were printed from the 3D printer. Uh, we had met a guy who actually was there in a steampunk inspired mm-hmm. costume, and he had a mechanical hand, um, which he had printed off right. on his 3D printer. So I think you're going to be seeing a lot more 3D printed uh, cosplay pieces out there, and they are pretty awesome. Yeah, there's some guys that have done some really crazy uh, Space Marine stuff where they've printed like the whole their whole thing has been 3d printed so it's it's really really cool um i think it's just hasn't exploded yet so i also think speaking of christmas another possible geeky gamey application for this uh decorating your christmas tree let's talk oh, about how expensive man. christmas ornaments are you want like a star wars tree or like a you know even just gaming oh i want to you know a bunch of d20 christmas ornaments well, guess mm-hmm. what you can print you some right that's awesome i didn't think about that crafty <laughs> Big brain. So I guess uh, <laughs> so as for so far as sources for files and stuff that I print off, um, like I told, we talked about the Dragon Lock uh, tiles, and those came from Fat Dragon Games. They actually have a, another Kickstarter that just finished off because these tiles are primarily for for dungeons. You know, they're like, kind of like um, what would you call this dungeon know. wall? Right. Yeah, it's like a brick <laughs> wall. I don't know, however you want to call it. But, Cinder block. But there, there's there's those. They also have a village one they just put out that's all modular. So none of it's like married to how it has to get put together. You can put it together any way you want. Um, they are really awesome. Um, I'll show some pictures of these. All I did was I printed them in gray or black and then did a quick layer of priming on them and then a quick dry brush, and they look really good. I, I really, really love them. Um, and I'll put a picture of all three of them together so you guys can see how they look at each stage of it. For those of you that don't like painting, they looked pretty cool before they were painted too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, really, one just print, printing them off and then one layer of primer with the spray paint, and you can be good to go. Like and they look they look pretty good just like that. Mm-hmm. The other one uh, is uh, printablescenery.com. They they've got a frigate and some other like sci-fi stuff that they've got on there as well as some dungeon tiles and stuff. Um, and they are really nice and good stuff. And it's all really reasonably priced because once you buy these files, you can print them as many times as you want. It's not like you can only print them once. You just you know as much as you want to keep buying filament for, you can keep on printing. Can you define reasonably priced? Um, I'm gonna pause for a minute here. Hang on. <laughs> Excellent question. I have no idea. <laughs> okay, so I just brought it up on Drive Through RPG and the Dragon Lock Ultimate Dungeon Starter set. It is as of right now, today, it is four ninety nine and it comes with straight wall one and straight wall two, which is a two by two section with a with a straight wall and there's two different wall layouts, so you don't have the same exact wall repeated repeated over and over again. There's two different wall layouts. A corner, a narrow pillar. A doorway with a door that opens and closes, and you can take it out as well. Uh, just a regular two by two square tile. The clips that interlock them all together. Um, instructions. That's it. That's cool. So that that's four dollars and ninety nine cents. Just to clarify, and that's the basic set. And there's a lot of different expansions to it that have like curved walls and all different kinds of stuff. There's some that have like wells. There's trap pieces. There's all kinds of stuff. So just poke around on RPG or drive through RPG. Uh, dot com and you can see it but I'll, I'll, there'll be a link in the show notes but it's they're really really awesome there's lots of other ones out there there's some that are free but uh, these are the ones that just I got first and I've just printed a ton of them and I stuck with them because I like them so much and I've already bought them so they're but they're great the as far I told you about I mentioned the printable scenery and they've got a lot of stuff out there too but also Thingiverse is another uh, repository I guess you might say that has a ton of files to download so they've got terrain stuff and mini game stuff if you want to be able to print trees or hills or anything you can imagine it's on there some of the they've got lots of cosplay stuff on there gadgets for your kitchen anything you can imagine but so it has more applications just than just for gaming that's gaming is kind of what we want to focus on i guess so i got the dice tower from there there's just lots and lots of stuff on there you can find for free and there is some stuff that you do that does cost but most of it like ten dollars would be on the high side for what things cost we will put up some pictures so you guys can see what we've printed, and we'll link you to some websites where you can find a whole plethora of other exciting things that you can print. Right on. Do you guys have any questions about it, like that you would think of that people would want to know? Can you print replacement game pieces? Like, 
if you lose something. I suppose you could if you wanted to do the layout and design it. You probably could. And most game pieces are pretty simple. You know, something it might be it, difficult to find like a custom piece without designing it yourself, mm-hmm, I yeah. would think. But if you're looking for just like a generic game piece, like, oh, I lost my Monopoly house, you can right. probably find a file yeah. for Monopoly. There house is other things too for board games. I know that a lot of people kind of do both role playing and board games. Like, so if you play Zombicide, there's a lot of files that are out there that like this will hold your Zombicide cards and it's custom fit for it and it's got a logo on it or whatever. You know, like, there's a lot of stuff like that out there that's really it's kind cool. Of like your game game box mm-hmm. inserts that help you organize things. Things, mm-hmm. so that's definitely a possibility too. But yeah, I imagine if if you took the time to design it, you could probably oh, you could, print look, your it's, own pieces it's, too. It's limitless if you want to put in the time to design it. And all the like, I have some design software as well. I use uh, Mesh Mixer and One Two Three D and uh, a couple of different AutoCAD programs, but they're all free versions of it, so you don't have to. You don't have a lot of money. You have to stick into software either. The basic software that that the the 3D printer uses to print is free. It comes with the printer. I mean, you know, most of it's it's pretty and user friendly if, if you're in a place where you're into kind of designing your own games to play around with you know you can print pieces if you wanted to make your own board game right yeah so if you're into game design this would be a total easy not way not even just to sell you know like right. if you just wanted to make a game right or like for your prototype if you wanted to prototype a game this would be the way to do it, the easy way to do it too could probably print some really cool props too oh yeah props and games are cool yeah i agree Most definitely there's a, I'm sure, a huge assortment of Cthulhu. Mm, there is. Uh, it's it's really things. too much to talk about. There's <laughs> like lightsabers, any like you know different uh, guns from different video games and stuff like that. It's just on and on and on and on. Very whatever very cool. your nerd fix is, it's out there. It's out there. Right. So anything else you guys can think of that would come to mind right away for things that you thought of like initially when we first started doing it that was like, oh, how does this work? Or you know, like I was really interested in how much each piece would cost to make, but. If your roll of filament's only a couple bucks. Yeah, I mean, so I guess we can talk about that. Like the the filament that I buy is from Hatchbox. I get it off of Amazon with free shipping because we have Amazon Prime, and it's like twenty three dollars I think shipped or with free shipping. And it's two. It's a kilogram, so it's two point two pounds or yeah, two point two pounds of of plastic of filament. And most of these pieces are very light, so you can you know like I printed, I don't even know. 40, 50 tiles they off of one. Each basically like a couple of ounces. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, it, it's just loads and loads and loads of tiles. So, um, from one spool of filament, you can you can get a lot out of it. So, it's Originally, when we started, I kind of had a question about, um, we, we touched on it a little bit about printing things in multiple colors. So, if you have a single filament machine, then you can do that, but you have to change out filament and, and glue pieces together to get that. So, if you just have the single filament printer, you're going to end up with one color items, which you can right. either paint or... Um, glue other colored pieces mm-hmm. to them but you're not going to be able to get like an easy like plaid pattern on something right, like it's yeah. not going to it's not going to print like that now the okay. you can, when I, we say that you can still paint them they paint very well they hold the paint very well so it's no different than painting any of your other plastic mini stuff so i figured this would be kind of a shorter one where you know so there's not a whole lot to talk about but i just want to let you guys know i have been doing it for almost a year now so if you guys have any questions about anything you know you want to know or should I or shouldn't I or just any specific questions that we didn't think of to mention mention today. <clears throat> or if you are 3D printing and you have some really cool pictures you want to show or post or whatever, you know, feel free to, you know, to drop them in the comments. Yeah, to, to say something in the comments or if you want to email me with specific questions, it'd be James at just one dot com. I'll be more than happy to to help you in any way I can. Cause I think it's it's awesome and it's a great thing for gaming. It makes your gaming so much, much cooler. Um, there'll be, I'll, we'll put up lots of pictures, so make sure you go to the website. It'll, they'll be, they'll be with this episode. So there'll have, uh, minis in there that you commonly see for scale and that kind of stuff to give you an example. I will admit I am not the best painter in the world. I do a little bit of mini painting, but so the ones you guys that are see that are in there, they're all painted by me. Everything that's there has been painted by me. So you have an idea. I'm by no means a pro. I'm, I'm significantly on the amateur side, but I'm happy with it. So, Hey, it's all that matters. <laughs> so that, I think that'll do it. So, uh, Yeah. Uh, 3D printing is pretty cool. I like it. It's got a lot of applications, but specifically for gaming, it's it's really awesome. I think it really improves your table experience and your immersion, you know, to it. So go out there, check it out. Uh, it's a good time. Right on, right on, right on. Thanks for listening. This has been another episode of Just One More Fix. Music has been provided by Kevin McLeod. You can find him at incompetech.com. You can find us at justonemorefix.com and follow us on Twitter at justonemorefix. one more fix.